Hello, my name is Tridar. Today I'm going to be showing you how to build a Roman docks in Minecraft. Let's get started. Yes, that's right. Today we're doing the much anticipated and requested Roman docks tutorial. And if we want to guide our boat into the harbor here, we can see we have a generous amount of space to fit a great many Minecraft boats. Uh, but also, if we can out and dock our boat there, it also has spaces for four of these Roman war galleys, which I've recently done a tutorial on. You have to pull the oars in on the side and lower the sails. We'll talk about that later. But it's got enough space to put one galley here, there, and depending on the topography of your landscape, you can put one on the sides as well. Of course, it's done in the typical Roman style that I do. So if you've done any of the other buildings, they should all match each other. Uh, and, and if you want to, the design is, is you, you, you can modify it from the standard design here. If, for instance, uh, you, you could possibly split this in the middle and continue the colonnade out if you wanted perhaps a wider docks and split it that way. Or if you wanted to split it down one of the uh, towers here, you could just use this as your center line and build uh, just another docks over there and just have, just however many of these you feel like building. But... Because I do have to fit this into a tutorial, and this is already going to be two parts, I know. Um, I've elected to do a more simple design. If this is going to do be like a more historical, full-scale Roman harbor, what we would really want to do is enclose this entire bay here and make like a big concrete pier with a, with a big lighthouse and everything. And, and a bunch of warehouses along the shore and all that too. But for Minecraft, I decided to do something a little bit smaller and self-contained. It's mostly done in the same design that I did my elven docks in previously. Uh, but of course it's done in, in a Roman theme. And you'll also recognize here we have the Greek hoplite as well standing on the triumphal arch. Because I think the uh, with, with the towers here it framed that rather well. And of course you always want to put, put a nice statue like that in a focal point of your build too. Uh, so if we want to land here let's take a closer look at the build itself. So you can see at the water level here, we have all the oak and everything. And of course, we have, uh, we have wood piers uh, all dug in to the surrounding landscape. In fact, if we will take, um, I was nowhere near that potion, but it's still, still splashed anyway. Uh, if we take a, want to take a look underground, or underground, un underwater, which we, which we uh, can't, can't see a thing, And I think if I will have a water breathing potion, there we go. We can actually see what we're doing. So the tutorial itself is only going to go down for about three blocks, um, including this little section here showing you this, it, the docks integrated into a, a section of uh, natural Minecraft terrain because you're going to have to find a space in your world suitable to be able to fit this into. Like you can see here, the pattern's pretty easy. All you're doing is you're, you're extending down the cobbled deep slate and you're extending down the tree trunks all the way down to the bottom, but you want them to, to you know, follow the topography around your uh, harbor and everything. I mean, you don't, you don't technically have to extend them down, uh, but these things always look a lot nicer if you, if you go to the extra effort and everything. As so we can see the underside of our ship here. So wherever you decide to put this in your world, you're gonna have to scout around carefully and measure water depths and everything and find just the right place where you will be able to to fit this in. I had to fly around this world for a little while before I found a suitable one. I think uh, the Elven Docks is way over in that direction. This is, the, this is the same world. This is a demo world here so I can show you the building. You also need to bear in mind that it only comes up a couple of blocks at the back here. So you may not want to try and fit it into some... Um, is there some around here? Perhaps some of that uh, steeper terrain over there, you really want to find just a nice green plains area that joins on to some ocean. And that'll be a great spot for it. Because we can see down here that if we just follow the line of the diorite, it's only uh, three blocks above the water line. And so that's, that's pretty much all the space you're going to have for that. So if we want to go in here, Slash's Potion, let's take a look on the inside. So we have a little rib vault. Up there, just a little square one. Uh, technically, the Romans didn't actually do rib vaults. This is this is a later, uh, a, a a much later uh, building technique. 
Uh, but it looks so nice in Minecraft. What what they would do, they would the Romans would do groin vaults, which they're essentially the same. But in later centuries, they would start adding a, a masonry rib in this big X pattern, like that, down through it to uh, to uh, accentuate the the vaulting a bit more. Um, the Romans would paint uh, paint um, paint in a pattern like that, but uh, I don't think they did it in masonry. Not as far as I'm aware. Not until not until quite a bit later. Maybe the Byzantines did it. Uh, but we have a barrel vault here, off to the side, a ribbed barrel vault. You can see the diorite ribs. Right there, we have two of those on either side. And uh, here we are behind the central little triumphal arch under a little pavilion here. And if we uh, go back, go back this way. And out here we of course have two pavilions with the colonnade and everything right here on the front of our docks. And there's various places for stairs that we can walk up and down to get, uh, to get back. Uh, up to the level after we dock our boat. It wouldn't be very good if we uh, docked our boat and didn't have any stairs. Uh, so uh, there is a ladder here, and there's a couple of spaces here with, I'm pretty sure, what are some invisible chests. I always love this Minecraft bug. We've got some invisible chests here. Uh, it's for you. It's, yeah, I wanted to include a space for you to store your boats and everything in this little archway. Uh, but if we climb up the ladder, we can go up in these little towers. So I did leave a space for that. So if you wanted to store some more things up here, or if you want to have just a little uh, a little satellite base somewhere that you go to, I've just included a more simplified uh, cobblestone rib vault in these two. There's one there, and there's another one. There's another one up here. And of course we have windows and everything. If we want to look out, of course, only the upper sections of the towers have these these windows. If uh, I can get back down the stairs. There we go. Uh, so these two levels have the stairs, but when we go back down here, of course, um, uh, the ceilings are a bit more ornate uh, because they need, they, they need to share the pattern with uh, the, the roof tiles because I cut it pretty close. Uh, but down here, we can see that I've elected to just put in some uh, oak fences down here as well. Because the docks is really meant to be a, a work-a-day type structure. Uh, meaning that it's not exactly a high-status area. So we could use some of the cheaper materials. So I, I went with the cheaper stuff and the simple stuff on the bottom. But of course, as you go up in height, you want to increase detail and everything. We start using glass. And everything, of course, at the top here, we have two decorative Akrotarion statues topping our little domes. And now, technically, these domes, they should be octagonal. Uh, but at this scale in Minecraft, there's, you really can't bring out that sort of detail. So they, they end up lo looking just the same. But if you feel like making your, do uh, your docks just a little bit nicer, you can replace the uh, fences down here with some more glass and everything. It's not included in the tutorial um, materials list I've already posted. Uh, but you will have to uh, figure that out for yourself. You probably need equal parts of, uh, of uh, glass blocks and panes for that, though. You could probably take uh, whatever the number of the uh, fences is and divide that by two, and, that, and that'll give you the pane and the block numbers, I should think. It looks pretty nice, I think, from, from this section also. But th that is pretty much the tour done for the docks. So let us now flip over to the tutorial world where we, where we need to talk about this galley over here and how you uh, need to modify that from the galley tutorial to integrate it into these docks. All right, here we are in the tutorial world. This is the model we're going to be taking a look at for the tutorial itself. As I explained, you're going to need to start uh, at a couple of blocks, either at or below the water level. Uh, specifically, uh, what? I think it's three blocks. Three blocks down, because remember, we saw the water at the level of the oak. So three blocks down is where we're going to start the tutorial. 
And I also want to mention over here that I've extended the red out a little like this. You can also, if say, um, now, now the land in the tutorial world I showed you stopped, stopped somewhere around here. Uh, but if, you're, uh, if you push it out farther into the water, you can extend the pattern of the, uh, wooden, the wooden dock area all the way back as far as you need to, uh, just until you hit land. It doesn't have to be just right here and stop. You can extend it on backwards if you want to. But uh, the, the extra red here is here for, you know, um, this type of structure, you need to be able to fit it to your specific topography. This is why we're doing this in a flat world and why I wanted to show you that in situ, put in a Minecraft world, because there's going to be some extra steps that you're going to have to, to figure out. Uh, so speaking of the extra steps, here, of course, is, is the, uh, the Greek hoplite from the Greek hoplite tutorial. We are not going to be covering that in this particular tutorial because I wanted to use it for other things other than just this little dock here, but I didn't want to cover it twice, so it already has its own video. And over here, of course, we have, this is the, the reference model of the Roman galley. We can, of course, see the sail is down, the oars are stuck out. But if you want to build a couple of these and the Roman docks here, of course, you need to raise your sail, uh, which pretty much means uh, everything that's, uh, that's two or three blocks down below the sail, you don't have to build that. And you need to pull all your oars in. You're going to need to pull them in uh, so, so, they don't, so they don't stick out any more than, than six blocks from the, from the side of the hull here. And they all have the same design. It's just um, uh, here where we have where we have the oar thing, where where the where the, of course the, the galley slaves are sitting rowing our oars. We just have three blocks out, and then one block down and over for two there, and then four blocks there. And all the oar patterns of that follow the exact the exact same design. Uh, also remove the flag from this one as well. And that's appropriately sized for you to be able to fit one of those in this section here and another one over there. And depending on your topography, you may be able to squeeze in uh, two on either side there. Also, depending on how you want to modify the docks in general. Like if you want to build a much bigger complex and like split it down the middle and build an identical one on either side, you could, of course, accommodate more war galleys than that in your fleet. Um... So I think with all, all that explanation out of the way, it was, it was a lot of talking, uh, we need to take a look at um, the next section here. Uh, so for these, um, where, where should we start? Uh, so we already have uh, quite a lot of red and, uh, and levers placed, and that is because um, this is actually this, the second time that I am having to record this entire tutorial series because the first time uh, the sound didn't record. This video is supposed to go out like uh, a week or two ago. Uh, but anyway, I'm just getting around to being able to re-record it. So I think for this one, uh, I didn't do anything on this side over here. So we'll just, we'll just start over on this side. Uh, now this building, like I said, is symmetrical. It has a center line right here. So of course what we're going to be building on the left side is going to be symmetrical to what's on the right side. And I think instead of counting with the levers like I did last time, I don't think that really worked very well. We're just going to go back to the carpet. Um, I think let's probably start at the back corner here. Well, now we should really start, we should really start here at the center line. So wherever you want to build this, go ahead and draw a center line like this here. And including uh, this point here, this is, this is going to be one. And then we're going to go for two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 12, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 20, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. So 30 blocks. And then we want to turn and go for counting this one here, counting this one here. One, two, three, four, five blocks. And then counting this one again here, right there for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, 
14, 15, 16, 17 blocks. And then we want to turn and go for quite a ways. We want to go for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56 blocks. Quite a bit of counting. 56 blocks to get all the way down here. And then counting this one here, we want to go for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17 blocks. And then, I think uh, instead, of, instead of counting all that out, uh, if we just extend this over here by, uh, what, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 blocks in the middle when we get to block 16. And that's when we want to place this one and then just run a connecting line all the way back down there. And uh, never, never, never mind the uh, extra cobble deep slate behind that. Uh, we'll be talking about that later. That, that's left over from where the stairs are being extended down. Uh, this is one of these builds. I've optimized it down here to uh, just be a shell. So you don't have to, there's not too much filler material that you're going to have to be including in this one. Uh, and then we need to get around to the middle part. So I think from this point here and counting this one, we want to go for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 18, 19, 21, 22, 23, and then 24 right there. And, and, and counting this one, we want to go for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and then 13 blocks total to get to there. And then at the front here, we want to go for what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And right, right here on the seventh block, that should be where you hit your center line. If somewhere in that complex series of numbers you didn't hit your center line, that means something went wrong. So you need to, uh, this is one of these things I would suggest, it's quite a big build. So you should go over your, your numbering that we've all counted out uh, three times. I know it's a lot of work, but this phase ex is extremely foundational. Little is literally foundational. So it would behoove you to uh, check those numbers to make sure they're correct. Because if you get off by one somewhere on this now, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's going to cause problems later on. Uh, so, uh, uh, back here, I think we now need to, what, let's go back here into this corner. And if we count out from this corner a diagonal of one, two, three, and four, uh, right here we can see we want to put a, a tree trunk right there. And then every three blocks, we want to put a tree trunk. Well, actually, every four blocks. It's three blocks of space that we're leaving. We want to put uh, however many number of tree trunks it takes you. It's all, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine tree trunks. And then we want to turn the corner for a couple of blocks there. And then place, what is that, six tree trunks along the front. And then turn the corner again and place how, just however many tree trunks you need to get all the way to the back of your topography. Remember I talked about that little topography thing over there? This is one of these sections that um, I, I don't know what your world is going to look like, where you're, at, where you're going to build this. So I'm, I'm trying to, uh, to guide you with extending the patterns for everything, because this is one of these structures that you can't really just level the land and throw it down like a lot of them. You need to do some, uh, some planning and maybe a little bit of terraforming to uh, fit your build into your specific terrain. So, let's see. I think, I think I've beat phase one to death as much as I can. 
So we are going to uh, continue. Uh, well, I, I didn't talk about. There's also, uh, what, five more tree trunks right here. It's got to leave one, one block of space there. And then the, and then the, they should hit the uh, cobbled deep slate wall right there for that. All right. Quite a lot of talking so far, not a lot of building. Uh, next phase, you want to extend all your tree trunks and your cobbled deep slate up by one block. All the way around, same pattern, same numbering, same everything. Uh, here, now, we're at the level of the water. So this is when we want to, uh, you can go ahead and extend up your tree trunks again for the third block and the cobbled deep slate behind that. And in front here, you want to put down your oak planks. And just do that in this pattern here. Just wrap it around, just like so, and uh, fit it to, to whatever topography you're working with on, on the various sides over there. And we'll go on to the next phase, which I've I probably put down on my counting blocks on the left side the first time we did this. So we're going to have to focus on the right one because uh, that, that one's going to be clean. And so we have to redo it. Uh, so here in the middle, we have three cobblestone stairs. These should come, come right here in the middle. Four, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And this should be also seven. Seven right there. And then back here, we want to count back, counting this one for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And on the 13th block, that's when we want to uh, stop and have the cobble deep slate there and have two cobblestone stairs here. And just instead of counting that out again, if we just draw a line here directly across, our stairs are, of course, symmetrical. So they're going to be the same on both sides. And of course, remember, the entire building is symmetrical. So if we draw a center line right here, what we're doing on the right, we're doing the same thing on the left. Just a mirror image. Uh, there are a couple more stairs back over here in this little corner. We got three stairs here and then two there. All right, let's do a couple more phases. We're just not going to get all the way through this. The first time I recorded this, I went for over an hour and a half. And that was entirely too long, but I wanted to get it finished, but it did, didn't get recorded. So we had to, we have to do it again, which means that I'm going to make, uh, to make my life bearable, we're just going to split this into two parts. Um, so on the top of all of these uh, tree trunks for the next level, we want to go around and put spruce trap doors on top of every one of those like so. Just every one of those. For all the stairs, you want to extend them one block back and push them uh, one block up. Just like so, all the stairs. And of course, you can see the cobbled deep slate is being raised up as well. Uh, all right, uh, next phase. On top of the cobbled deep slate, we want to put down this little border here of diorite down here at the bottom. And then we want to put, of course, uh, our third level of stairs. And then you want to wrap the cobbled, uh, not the cobbled, you want to wrap the, the diorite around those. We don't have cobbled dot right though. That'd be cool if we did. Uh, but we don't, uh, so we don't have cobbled sandstone either, but you know, uh, maybe someday. Um, but uh, anyway, I, I digress. Uh, we want to do our stairs just like so. And behind this, you can see I put in a very simple uh, uh, alternating uh, pattern here of cobbled deep slate and tough for a very simple checkerboard pattern. I don't want to do uh, anything, you know, just, just too nice. It is a docks. We, we don't really have a mosaic floor in this. We have to save that for the nice villas and everything. Uh, but you can start this pattern just wherever you want to and just extend it all the way between the diorite so it's all capped off. And here's, here's a view, of course. We just are wrapping the diorite around the front here, just like so. So let me give you a big, big altitude shot of this one here. And we'll move on to the next phase. This phase, this one, this one required quite a bit of explanation, as I recall, at least uh, based on all the red I put down. Maybe we can use that again. Well, I mean, I'll show it to you. Since I've already done the work in putting down the red and everything, we do have a lot of things to count out on that, though. So I'll just give you a quick look at this in case it's useful. 
Uh, I think the first thing we'll take a look at is uh, actually this little triumphal arch here. Uh, so uh, here's the pattern for that. It's just a bit of cobblestone, mostly, right there. And I think, uh, I suppose from that, we'll just start here on the center line. That's where all these uh, levers are here. That's our, that's our center line. We have this little cross we have here of uh, cobble, of, uh, not cobble, uh, of diorite and tuff, just like so. And now the intercolumnation distance for almost all the columns in this building is going to be two blocks. Just like you see here, when you know, back over here, two blocks. So we want to put a little uh, cross there, five blocks, skip it, skip two for the stairs, and put another one here. And of course, you can see behind this, we have uh, um, the foundation also for uh, our building for our docks building here. Remember we have the two barrel vaulted chambers here and the rib vault chamber here with uh, the, the towers on the top of it. It's out of range now, but you remember what it looked like. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to give you a panning view of this without anything on it. And then I'm going to go back and do some counting. See here at the front, we have we have only intercolumnation distance of one block right here on the corners. But then we have uh, three in the middle here. That's just how that had to work out. And that actually was commonly done on, on pediments, actually. If you, if you ever see those things, just look at them carefully, and you'll notice that the columns in the middle are actually always a bit wider. Well, if whoever built it knew what they were doing, the columns in the middle are wider than the ones on the sides. And the ones on the corners should be squished in just that just a little bit more than all the others are as well. That's one of those things that is actually it's done on the Parthenon and all, all the ancient Greek and Roman buildings and everything as, as an optical uh, correction for your eye. But of course, you know, in Minecraft, they would do it to a more subtle degree we can only do things in increments of one block, so it's really obviously apparent here. Uh, but if we were doing this in reality, we would actually be uh, changing the, dis the distances by uh, just, just really by inches. A and maybe sometimes inches and fractions of inches, depending on the ratio of the building and everything. Uh, but, you know, that's some of that extra information I like to include. These are... Uh, th these are the questions you win Jeopardy with. Um, so let's let's go back here and um, and I think we need to do some counting. So from our pilaster here, of course we have the freestanding pillars out here. If the, when they're attached to a building, they're called pilasters. So we have five blocks there, and then what? Uh, counting this on one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 12, 13, 14, 15, 18, uh, 19, and then we have a 4x4 four four cobble there. And then we have a 2x3 a right there. And then we have uh, however long this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 15, 18, 19, 20. And then turn the corner and just tack on three more. And then skip five blocks in the middle. And then we want to do the same, the same numbering till we get back here, right here. You can see you just skip another five blocks here, and that's the same design here. And then back here, we want to count for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, twelve, fifteen, sixteen. I, th I think that was sixteen. I feel like I may have miscounted. One, two, three, four, five, six. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Nope, nope. I got it right. Sometimes I won't miscount, though, so I do like to... I, I, I try not to do that. Uh, four blocks here in the middle. Skip five blocks for a little archway. We've got four column bases here at the front. And then, of course, we have just that same design here. A bit of cobble there. And then uh, skipping skipping these two blocks of cobble. They're just straight across from those over there. We want to count for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 
13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 20 blocks, and then tack on three more here. And uh, these five here in the middle should come right back to where we started. If they don't, then you made a mistake. And you need to go back and uh, make sure it's corrected. And then we've got uh, uh, three freestanding columns there, there in the middle. All right, so I think uh, I think I beat that phase to death as, as good as I can. So we are going to continue on to the next one where you're doing a whole lot of column bases again. So on top of the, the all the column bases, you want to put your right side upstairs just uh, just right there like that. So I will go around here and give you a good view of those. Now that we've done all the counting, there's not really there's not really too much to count. There's just a lot I'm just going to show you. So as you can see, stone bricks here. This is mostly a stone brick phase. We're, this is one of these buildings where we're going to be alternating the cobblestone and the stone bricks. If you're familiar with any of my other Roman tutorials, that's what we're going to be doing. And then here we are at our center line. So let's just take a look uh, now at the interior. I don't think I need to go very slowly on the interior. It's, it's not, there's not a lot of details here. There's some upside down stairs here for these, uh, you know, these 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 wonderful Minecraft invis invisible chest bugs that we have. As remember, so sometimes when you can't find where you put things, it could be that your chest may just be invisible. And you're searching around, you can't find your stuff, and you're like, but I put it in a chest. But the chest has gone invisible. Uh, so over here we have uh, a bit of detail for the triumphal entry arch right here. Uh, it's mostly just a decorative platform for our, uh, uh, our hoplite statue to stand on is what it is. It's not, actually, it's not an actual entry arch because there's no stairs. Um, I think that's all there is to talk about on that one. Let's go on to the uh, the next phase over here, uh, where I can I can talk about this here. So all these pillars, if you want to go ahead and extend up your diorite for one, two, three, four, five, six, that's going to be for the column shafts, and you want, want might want to put an additional two blocks on top of that. Uh, because we're going to need some place to uh, put our, um, our Corinthian uh, capitals. That's where those levers are. So you may want to just go ahead and extend those to eight. At this level, it's probably easier for you to just, you know, to, to just block up eight blocks. On top of all of those, at wherever you see these individual blocks of diorite is where you want to do that. So let's go right here and take a look at that. You can see behind here we have the cobblestone. And, of course, the oak fences here for the windows. You can switch that out to glass at this level if you want to have your dock speed just a little bit uh, more uh, high status. Uh, perhaps uh, it's an imperial docks, and, of course, the emperor has to, has, has to have very nice dock facilities. Uh, same detail with the pilasters there, and of course with the pillars here, we're just, you know, single blocks of diorite, you can go ahead and extend all those up to eight. Just like so, let's continue going around the exterior though, taking a look at it. We're going to do a few more phases, uh, I think before I call it, for today's episode. But this should be more than enough to get you started. And here we are at at our center line. So uh, let's see. I think uh, I think we took took a look at the arch details. So now let's take a quick look on the interior. There's not actually much different from the interior at this level. Of course, we got our ladder started to climb up in our towers and everything. And one side of these uh, these hallways is just a, a mirror image of the other one. So I'm just going to give you a top-down view of that so you can, you can kind of look over and double-check your work. 
uh, for the next phase, these next few phases are going to go pretty quick. So uh, there's nothing to remark about out here. You're extending the die right up, like I said. So we're just going to take a quick look here. This phase is mostly a repeat of the previous phase with the diorite and the fences and everything, except you're using now the, the stone bricks at this level. And we're going to be switching back to cobblestone for the next one. So I'll just give you kind of a quick view on this since we're just stacking things up. The only thing different over here is we're going to have another shelf for our chests right there. All right, uh, next level, take a quick look here at the arch. And another quick look out here at this. So uh, this phase is pretty much identical to the previous one. You're just stacking up your cobblestone and your oak fences, just like so for your windows. All the way around there. And the only difference is we have, of course, a little space here for our chests. All right, uh, next phase here, stone bricks. We do have a couple of upside down stairs here, though, for our archway. And we also have some upside down stairs right here. It's sort of a, it's a decorative detail for that section, but that's just on the exterior. Well, I mean, it's just on the exterior and the interior, so it's, it's on both. Just like so, it should be on both sides over here. Just like that. And then we want to wrap it around the corners. Like so here. For the stairs. Those, uh, those there, this here, and, and right there. Otherwise, this entire phase is a repeat copy of the, the previous stone brick phase. With the fences and everything just going straight up. I don't think I need to. To beat that to death. Uh, it does extend out the front here though and wraps around the corner and it's extended just straight down here and wraps around there as well. All right uh, next phase just because it's an easy phase I'll keep going. Start with the archway though got a bit of diorite right right there. And uh, it's just another cobblestone phase with the, with the fences and everything and extending your diorite uh, column shafts up here on the exterior. Cobblestone all around there. And let's take a look. We do have some, some cobblestone in the corners here. This, this is the lowest most section of our rib vault that we're going to be building. Right there in all the corners, all four. Otherwise, I think that's all there is on that phase. Let's go to the next one. On this one, we have a stone brick level phase for the most part, except we also have some little arches, some little really, really, really small arches we're putting on to, uh, to cap off these, uh, these windows here. So of course, uh, these windows, I mean, they're all the same. Once you do one, the others are, are just all the same. So I'm not uh, dwelling too much on any of these. And it's giving you a quick look around the structure for completeness. Uh, back in the interior here, everything is just being extended up by one block with the diorite in all the four corners. But that's going to be all the time we have for today. I think we're, we're about halfway through with this, according to my recollections. So we're going to pick up for a part two next time and finish off the structure and everything. But I think you have quite enough to work on in the meantime. So I hope you do enjoy the Roman Docs tutorial, and I will see you next time.